was asked if I'd seen Game of Thrones, and yes I have. I've seen the entirety of season one, and Game of Thrones is a show that I respect more than I like. It's really not my thing. I don't really get into hour-long dramas very much. I think it, I like things a little simpler. I like, I tend to like more character-driven stories, and this is, the world building in this is very intricate. It's definitely, it's all, it's a political struggle between seven different families. So, which is so relevant to human history, considering how much of it is about power struggles. And they have a lot of, it's very challenging, it's very profound, and I get why people like it. It that fully deserves the respect and the reputation it gets. And I'd say the biggest thing is that the world building is really what's so great about it. I like the characters too. Of course, I know you can't get attached to most of them, though I like... I like Arya, I like Daenerys, I like Tyrion, and I know they've made it quite far, so that's good. They, everyone who's in it is extremely talented. It is very shocking. You know what I realized? I realized that for the longest time, for all the taboos that were broken, you know, making positive change, you know, more representation of different races, more LGBTQ in inclusion, Incest was the taboo that for the longest time you never broke. And Game of Thrones is like, nope! That is in the first episode. And that's a main part of the, of the relationships of two characters. I swear to God people have been more relaxed on incest in media since. Or at least, at least from what I see online. And the way people talk about it. It's no longer this big scary thing. I mean, not that I condone it. Not at all. It's still like, ugh. But I have noticed a shift in how people approach the subject. I don't know if it's done that in a positive way or a negative way, but it has made the topic easier to talk about. But it's, it was also, but I think it's also. I don't think that it was there just to shock people because money, much of royalty royalty in, in European history was incestuous. All these political families were marrying their cousins and then it got so inbred so there were a lot of, there were a lot of mental health issues as a result of that. So you can look up a lot of stories about insane royalty or mad kings, mad queens, which is probably for this reason. Oh, ancient Egypt as well. It was brothers and sisters marrying each other to keep the bloodlines pure. So it feels more like, considering a lot of these are royal families, that feels more like a historical accuracy than anything else. Now, going on to a different topic, I I think Arya's interesting. I like Daenerys. I like Tyrion. They're, they're fun to watch. They're all very, I think they're the most interesting, and they are the ones that I can, can most consistently root for, even though I know don't get attached. Apparently, teachers would punish students by spoiling the next Game of Thrones death if they acted up. I've heard a lot of stories about that. It's, it's very political in ways that's very reflective of, especially now, since how many different groups, even if it's not families, it's... I think in real life it's more ideologies, but it's still very, very interesting. There are a lot of very good ideas and very profound ideas in that show, in Game of Thrones. So, one you can definitely overanalyze and one you can, one you can learn about people by their opinions on this show. I feel the same way about Disney movies. Did I just compare Disney and Game of Thrones? Yes, but it's media. Because I feel like with well, the, the main thing is, it's one of those things where it's something familiar to a lot of people, and you can really learn about somebody through this. It's a good way of communication and figuring out about somebody. Now, it's, I do tend to like things a little bit simpler. I do like having characters you can consistently root for, even if it's building up to a beloved character's death. But I need, I need some hope in there. In Game of Thrones, I, I need a break. It is, there's so much in there. It's, I feel like I'm on overload when I watch it. But I can respect 
I can respect it a lot. It's it really belongs up there with something like Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter because the, all those, what they all have in common is their world building and in, of course, in a fantasy setting, but in ways that tie very much back to the bigger ideas and the bigger challenges of society. Harry Potter is all about prejudice and how that can lead to genocide. Lord of the Rings is war. Game of Thrones is quest for power. They all feel very connected. And I feel I also feel like to do fantasy well, you need a budget. And I heard I read online, I don't know what the full truth of this is. This is just what I saw online. But I saw that George R. R. Martin was he was in TV writing. He did not like having to consistently write write, write for low budget shows, so he wrote a song of fire and ice specifically to be unfilmable and and what we learned is anything is possible i mean lord of the rings supposedly was unfilmable considered unfilmable for a good chunk of the 20th century and now look at it i really do think that books and film and television are more similar than we like to give it credit for they're just different tools for doing the same thing and by the way, both can be equally bad for your eyes. If you're reading a book in low light, that's not so good for your eyes either. The way that too much screen time is. I've ranted about that a lot. But it is... I know a lot of the side characters in Game of Thrones are interesting and I would probably get to them if I watched more. I just can't bring myself to do it. Although... Joffrey dying. I know Joffrey dies. Oh, fucker. <laughs> it is... That's another one that feels like it was so anticlimactic. Because if there's so many people who want him dead, and it's the most anticlimactic of deaths. It feels like George R. R. Martin is trolling us at this point. Hmm. Yeah, look, what can you say? This is... It's... It's well paced. It's you see the characters really become great versions of themselves, even though where they start at the beginning is very interesting. And I wonder, even though I don't know as much about the show as many many other people, with what I know about history and what I've been observing, of course I know nothing, but I'm observing, and I wonder, whoever takes the Iron Throne. Whether they're a dictator or whether they're a benevolent ruler, I don't think they're going to stay there forever. I think, I wonder if that's what it's building up to that human history, there's always going to be these power struggles and there are going to be different ideologies or families. Families of, or I think families, families, ideologies, however we group ourselves, they're always going to be fighting to be the definitive ruler, the definitive, the definitive way of life. It's a, I think it's always a, I really think that, that's what I think. The definitive way of thought, the definitive way of living, the this is the right way and this is the one way, when really it's always going to be changing. I wonder, I wonder if I'm right. Who knows? But with limited knowledge about the show, but having seen, knowing how much change is around and how even in locked case systems, in locked systems of government and of ideology, things can change and they do change. It's very, very slow but nothing lasts forever, and that includes power. That's food for thought tonight. <laughs>